Hello and welcome people. This question is from gate 2016 exam. It's a two marks question from set one. First, let me read out the statement. The stage delays in a four stage pipeline are 800, 500, 400 and 300 picoseconds. The first stage would delay 800 picoseconds is replaced with a functionally equivalent design involving two stages with respective delays, 600 and 300 picoseconds. The throughput increase of the pipeline is dash percent. Okay, so they are saying these are two designs of a processor. The first one is a four staged pipeline and second one in the second design, this first stage is replaced by these two stages. Okay, these are actually the delays of the stages. And remember that unit is picoseconds. So each of these number is in picoseconds. Now you need to find percentage increase in throughput. Uh, the question is the throughput increase of pipeline is dash percent. Throughput means number of instructions processed per unit time. So that means we need to find out how many instructions are both of these pipelines completing in a given amount of time. For that first let's find out the time period of clock. Here you can see the largest delay is 800 okay and in this case the largest delay is 600. That means we will generate a clock every after every 800 picoseconds in this case. So in old design one clock is generated every 800 picoseconds. Similarly in new design, new or updated design, one clock is generated after every 600 picoseconds. Okay. Now because they haven't given any load, they haven't specified the number of instructions in program. You can safely assume infinitely large number of instructions. That means you can assume average CPI to be 1, which also implies that each instruction takes 800 picoseconds on this processor and 600 picoseconds on this processor. How can I say that? Average CPI is equal to 1 means every instruction takes one clock. One clock here takes 800 picoseconds. That means one instruction takes this much time on this processor. Similarly, one instruction takes this much time on this processor. Okay. Now, you just try to make these times equal. Here we have 800, here we have 600. You do something that you make these times equal. First thing is, you can just try to find how many clocks are generated in one second. Just take 800 and picosecond to this side and uh, try to bring one second here. Also try to bring one second here. That way you will know how many clocks are generated in both the processors in one second. But uh, easy approach is just find the LCM. Okay, so you do one thing. You multiply this entire equation by 3. Okay, into 3 on both sides and you multiply this one by 4. Why I am doing so? Because 8 3s are 24, 6 4s are 24. So I am trying to bring 24. I am trying to just make both of these uh, right sides equal. So equation 1 becomes 3 clocks required 2400 picoseconds and equation 2 becomes 4 clocks require 2400 picoseconds. That means in same amount of time the old design could generate only 3 clocks and hence process only 3 instructions. But in uh, 2400 picoseconds only. The new design is able to process four instructions. Now we need to find the increase in throughput. 
throughput means number of instructions processed per unit time. Let's say this one is one unit. Okay, we are considering 2400 picoseconds as one unit. The old design could generate three clocks and hence process only three instructions. Okay. Earlier we were able to process only three instructions. Now we are able to process four instructions. What is the increase? How many instructions more are processed now? Four minus three, which is one. Okay. This is uh, just converted into percent into 100. This is the increase. Now you very well know 1 by 3 into 100 is 33.33 percent. Okay. This is 1 by 3 percent, which is 33.33 percent. That's it. This is your answer. So uh, let me just summarize. First, we found out one clock takes how much time on both of the processors. Then we just tried to make this times equal. You can just convert it into one second. Uh, this 800 will come to this side and picosecond will also come to this side. And you can uh, just calculate how many clocks are generated in every second. That way also you can do. Or instead of just making it uh, in uh, converting it to one second, convert it into 2400 picoseconds because that's the easy approach. You just have to multiply these two. I can actually solve such questions orally if I follow this approach. Okay. Then you see in 2400 picoseconds, this one generates three clocks and this one generates four clocks. Just find out the increase in percentage. That's it.